very well, more than welcome to another uh, great morning in, uh, on the Coffee at 11 show. It's a beautiful Thursday morning here, spring morning in uh, lockdown heaven, and uh, things are going to get exciting. Delighted to introduce you this morning to my very special guest, lady I've been uh, on, on the sidelines of her career for the last number of years and uh, gotten to know her in recent times, Sinead O'Reardon. Please say hi, Sinead. Hello. Hi, everyone. And do you have a coffee mug, Sinead, to show us your coffee mug? Probably dirty and a bit of a lipstick stain, but there you go. I love it. It's the real Sinead O'Reilly. Delighted, delighted. So let me just tell you before we bring the lady in herself, let me just tell you some of the nice stuff that I'm aware of in relation to Sinead's journey, just to give you a pot of history. <clears throat> business name, founder of Orion Productions. Uh, what does your business do? It's an award-winning production company dedicated to producing new and innovative high quality work across film and theater. How long established founded in 2013, so therefore seven years. How many employees? Just me. And then Sinead goes on to say, uh, she's co-producer of the award-winning independent feature film, Dead Along the Way, and the more recent winner of best international web series, Sucking Diesel, in, uh, in which she also stars. Uh, Sinead's ho Sinead holds an honors degree in electronics engineering, and an acting diploma from LAMDA, and you can explain to us what LAMDA stands for in just a moment. Uh, she spent years testing software in Silicon Valley before following her heart and diving into the professional acting arena. Uh, with productions being suddenly halted, Sinead has co-founded East Coast Mask Makers, a non-profit organization with the intentions of making homemade cloth masks available to the vulnerable. And to date, the group have made and delivered over 5,000 masks. Now, ladies and gentlemen, with all of that under her belt, you'd be surprised to know that something most people don't know, and we certainly wouldn't pick up on uh, about Sinead, is that she's actually an introvert. This will be interesting. Sinead Reardon, great pleasure. Thank you for joining us on the Coffee at 11 show. In your own words, Sinead, bring us up those early years and all the way up to the founding of Orion. Um, well, I suppose the whole acting thing started at the age of six. Um, I was quite a shy kid and um, my mum decided to throw me into some acting and drama classes in Cork and I stayed with those classes um, under the tutelage of a lady called Jacqueline O'Halloran who did so much for my confidence levels over the years and um, I studied with her and through Jacqueline's work I acquired all of my Lambda qualifications so Lambda stands for London Academy of Music and Dramatic Art so I didn't actually attend Lambda in London I was able to just do the qualifications at home myself so it kind of brought me up to a level where I did them up to the age of kind of 16 17 and got a diploma in that which allows me to teach acting if I wanted to but never really went down that road um, and after that, I, I wanted to pursue acting in college, but the money wasn't really there. There weren't many acting courses in Cork. They were primarily in Dublin and London, and the money wasn't really there to send me to Dublin or to London. So um, I kind of thought about what else I could possibly do. I was good at maths. I was good at physics. My older brother had gone down the electrical engineering road, so I was like, oh, sure, look. I'll give that a bash. Um, so I went to CIT for four years and did, um, did got, got a degree in electronic engineering. There was only three girls in the, in the class throughout the whole thing, so that was a bit of crack. Um, so it was a very male-dominated industry, which I'm kind of used to. And um, yeah, and after that then I worked for Motorola in Cork for a couple of years, testing software. Uh, after that, I managed to get work in uh, Silicon Valley. My um, boyfriend at the time, now husband, who I met in LA when I was 18 actually, was living in California and I wanted to get over to California as soon as I possibly could. So after a few years experience in Motorola, I packed the bags, left Cork and uh, jetted off to um, the sunnier climates. And worked for um, a company called Open Wave Systems there for seven years. So I was testing software for them, and it was a great experience, but and great money. But uh, I wasn't content, you know. In my heart, I knew I had to do something else. I did dabble in some plays when I was in California, um, 
I did a few things in the San Jose theater over there, um, but nothing full time. And I kind of look back on that time now and I'm kind of thinking, shit, LA was within so much reach at the time. I could have been flying down for auditions, but I guess my headspace wasn't there at the time for it. There's a time and a place for everything, I believe. So um, yeah, plodded along, tested software, um, eventually moved home after five years, much to, um, I wasn't the happiest at moving home. My husband nearly had to drag me kicking and screaming onto a plane to get me back to Ireland, um, and rightly so, but my father had passed away and uh, my mum was on her own. So that's really what brought me home, as well as the fact that my husband, Don, uh, wanted to do an MBA in Trinity, and it was a lot cheaper to do an MBA in Trinity than it was in the States. So there was a few reasons that brought us home. So we came home and I kept up the software engineering with the same company. So I transferred to Belfast, even though I was living in Dublin. So I commuted up to Belfast a couple of days a week and then worked from home the other few days. And um, during that time period, then I also started studying fashion design in the Grafton Academy of Design as a part-time hobby. Um, and then I did that for five years, just as a part-time, and that's kind of where my sewing skills would have come from. And after that, then, um, I got pregnant and I had two boys and very close to each other. And after I had the boys, I kind of hit a real sort of slump in that I got really bad postnatal depression. So uh, that went on for a number of years because I wasn't diagnosed with it. I just didn't bother going to the doctor. I just thought it was meant to be this hard um, until things started spiraling downwards and I realized I needed some help. So once I got to the doctor and got the little magic pills for a while just to get me over the hump, um, I realized then that uh, I had to kind of stop the engineering and stop it wasn't making me content anymore so it was time to follow my real passion and at that then I went back and I, I jumped back on the saddle and I started doing various courses in um, camera design and, and, and film classes and acting classes just to get refreshed with everything again and then started uh, signing up with a few agents in Dublin and um, I see Deirdre Jones, she's another actor online here and Deirdre will vouch for the fact that it's so hard like audition to get the auditions, it's so hard to get roles um, and that was frustrating me and I, I, I don't have a lot of patience for waiting around so I established my own production company then, Orion Productions and um, I was kind of thrown in at the deep end there because I was meant to be pu putting on a, a play called The Wool Gatherer, which did amazingly well and received fantastic reviews. But I had a bit of a falling out, an artistic difference with the director at the time and the, and the producer. So all of a sudden it was down to me to produce this body of work and get it out there. And I had no experience in this. But I'm, I'm also a big believer of if you throw yourself into the deep end, you know, you will learn to swim. And that's what I did. And, um, and, I, and, and I love it. And I love it. And I'm going to come in here, if I may, before we lose all the richness of those last few minutes. Yeah. Made. So I suspect we're at the start of Orion Productions. And I'm excited about that. We, we go there in just a moment. But if I may just, first of all, thank you for being honest with us. Uh, the idea... What this thing has turned into is real people coming in to the cafe and being real in front of other real people mm -hmm. and us doing so and allowing ourselves to be somewhat vulnerable and thank you for sharing some of your personal struggles there it's giving other people permission to know that you know it's okay not to be okay seek help if you need it um, the, the important thing is that you're honest with yourself and take it from there so i want to thank you for that a couple of things i'm just uh, if I, I want to reflect back on your your journey Fly off to uh, San Jose to uh, to far to California at least to follow uh, your your boyfriend who is now your husband. We're delighted with that, by the way. It sounds sounds like love stories begin in uh, Motorola in Cork. If I'm not mistaken, if I missed, if I picked that up correctly. Um, the fact that he had to get you kicking and screaming on the flight to come back is really interesting. The fact that you're honest about, you know that you didn't use that time to go to LA and do auditions and all the rest of it 
I understand it, but you also qualify that by saying, basically, the timing has to be right and it wasn't right for you. So I believe the universal timing is always right, always. And so it wasn't for you at that time. You're here and you're here now in this time and you're in the right place. Interesting to hear that uh, Grafton Academy, my sister went there for, for a term too, that uh, that's where you got your sewing skills. Because I, I was wondering where that came from. Just yeah. East, East Coast mask makers. So really interesting stuff. Sorry that you lost your dad uh, along the way too. Um, but look, come here. Thank you for bringing us into, you know, potted history into who is Sinead O'Reardon. That's really important and, and we very much appreciate it. So we're now at the start of Orion Productions. I love the, we had artistic differences. Love that, right? Love that. And, uh, and I love the fact that rather than sulking about it, right, and, you know, throwing your toys out of the pram, taking your ball and going home, you said, I'm going to do this thing. Yeah. So that's where we are now. Take us through Orion Productions and the journey and the awards and all the rest of it, up to COVID, please. Right. So when I established Orion Productions and after that artistic difference, the play I produced was my first play called The Wool Gatherer. And it was a very small production in the new theatre in Dublin. Uh, but it absolutely blew the roof off the theatre. Um, it was a two-hander, so it was myself and an amazing actor, Michael Hawk. And I had a very skeleton crew of people helping me with stage design and, and lighting and, and all of that. But it did so well that we got a massive write-up in the... Um, the Sunday Times, which is a very hard thing to get into, particularly when you're in a small production. And like they even told us that our, our small production matched any of the stuff that was going on in the Abbey and stuff at the time. So that was a big, you know, kudos for me and the team. And, and, and it gave me more confidence then just to, to continue with other productions. So we went on to do another few plays, um, Breathless and another one called the, not sure if I'm allowed to curse, but the motherfucker with the hat was another play, which was absolutely phenomenal. And then during that time period, I met, um, a very good friend of mine now, his name is Morris O'Carroll, and Morris has become my partner really in the whole filmmaking side of things. So it's through Morris really that I got more into the film side of things. And he cast me in one of his short films. And um, after that, we just were kind of like two peas in a pod now, and we work together on every production. So that's where Dead Along the Way came from. So Dead Along the Way is Morris's brainchild. He's the writer and director of it. And I, um, I'm in it, I'm starring it also, but I co-produced it with him. And it was our first attempt at a full feature film on uh, no budget. And by no budget, I mean like 10,000 euro, which is nothing in the grand scheme of things. Uh, that budget went on practically feeding people, you know, because when you have people working for you for free, you have to at least give them a full belly, you know, it's the least you can do and give them expenses for travel and stuff. So we had an amazing team there. Um, I'm all about finding the right people to work with. It's so important, you know, people that will lift you up, um, people who have your backs. Um, I think we've all probably worked with the wrong people in the past and we learn from that you know um but yeah so i i'm all about finding the right people now and i kind of have I've, I've gained a good insight into um you know if i meet someone i can kind of read them fairly well now at this stage uh, whereas before i might have been a bit more naive and i would have trusted people a lot more but i'm good at reading people now um, so Morris and the team that we accrued there were just fantastic people, like-minded people, like ourselves, go-getters, um, <clears throat> in it for the right reason. And um, because of that and because of the faith that we all put in ourselves and in our own talents and uh, in Morris's script, we just invested ourselves completely. Uh, we embraced our limitations, which were like no money, you know, lack of resources and stuff. We embraced it, but we uh, we were happy to kind of still reach for the stars based on our limitations, you know. And we were very respectful towards each other. That's another huge thing that I'm um, very, like I, I, I believe a lot in. You need to have respect for the team around you. 
Um, so yeah, so we made the film and it did really well. We filled out cinemas, we got a cinema release, um, which was really great for a low funded film really. And then we got it, we got it distributed as well. So it's now on Amazon Prime and um, it's out there and we're trying to get it onto RTE right now as well. So yeah, so that's where we got to dead along the way. Let me come in here and offer you the first of many uh, Bula buses on the Coffee at 11 show this morning. So we show appreciation. That's for yourself and for Morris. Yeah. And uh, you've pr perhaps given me the phrase for the day so far, uh, embrace your limitations, but reach for the stars. Embrace your limitations, but reach for the stars. Beautiful. Congrats to you and Morris and, uh, you know, hats off. It's, it's just wonderful. Um, something you said earlier uh, about acting on, on auditions, on, you know, was nodding away when you were talking about it. It's 99% rejection. Yeah. You know, you turn up and you get, and, and the answer is no, 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 no. And eventually there's a yes in there. Ian Hannon, who was on earlier with us, uh, mm -hmm. his gig is sales training. One, one of his gigs is sales training. And it's about getting people resilient for the rejection. Yeah. And basically, a phrase that we've come up with over the years is he or she who collects the most no's wins, right? <laughs> It's, yeah. it's, it's a game of notes. You got to just, you know, get bulletproof and keep going. Really exciting. Congrats on the Amazon Prime stuff and good luck with RTE. Tell us about the Sucking Diesel because I saw that web series. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Sucking Diesel is a little bit out there now. It's a, uh, maybe there might be a little controversy around it in that it's about a Catholic priest who um, is very flawed and he gets addicted to cocaine and he's stealing from his parish to um, fund his drug habits and he gets his missus, I'm the missus, pregnant in the, in the series. So it's all about that. But it's, it was a great, absolutely great six-part series. Um, actually, it was four-part series in the end. It was on YouTube for a long, long time. Um, we recently took it down because, again, that was something we were actually trying to pitch to Aer Lingus. Um, in-flight entertainment so we took it down from YouTube just to have it off there for a while to see if we could get because we'd gotten dead along the way on in-flight so we were trying to get sucking diesel on in-flight but it did really well um, again an, an amazing bunch of people um, kind of a lot of the same actors that we worked with before and um, yeah it did great we won best international web series uh, in the New York web fest and it just went on to get like thousands of views on YouTube and, and we decided to put it up on YouTube for free um, because we, we had kind of like we had music that was associated with it and you can't if you know if you can put music up on free for YouTube if it's if it's licensed music you can use it otherwise you have to kind of come up with your own music and stuff but the music he chose suited it really well but yeah it did great it's funny it's quirky we might try get it back up there again um depending on what in-flight Aer Lingus say but yeah it was great like it was a great experience Oops. Uh, and is it off YouTube at the moment? You've taken it down it's from off YouTube at the moment, yeah. Um, but it, we might we may put it back up there fairly soon. You know, yeah, it's a it's a pity. It's a pity. If there are any hackers in the in the in the cafe, you might just seek a snap. Look, no, no, I just. <laughs> but it, it, I tell you, it is it is irreverent, <laughs> right? <laughs> Irreverent. Completely, completely yeah. irreverent. Yeah, you wouldn't want yeah. to be Holy Joe watching it. No, don't, 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 don't be sensitive, but, uh, but yeah. you get a chance. When, when the time is right, get to see it. Fantastic stuff. Fabulous, you know, and it's great. It's, it's so exciting. It's really interesting. You know, you went, go back to your early days. Your brother happened to be in electronics. You were good at maths and physics. Yeah. Uh, apparently, you're good at sewing. Apparently, you're great at acting. Apparently, you're great at producing. You, you've got this whole ball of wax going on, which is which is incredible. And uh, so, so now that we're in COVID, right, Orion Productions is going really strong, everything's going great, awards, you know, fame, yeah, yeah. etc. And then COVID hit. Where are you now? COVID hit, productions halted. Uh, myself and Morris had another feature in the pipelines. We were going to start filming in the summer. Uh, and probably one of the be our best pieces of work, to be honest. Um, but obviously that came to a halt for now. And um, yeah, so I was just kind of hanging around the house like the rest of us. And we just moved house just about six weeks prior to this whole lockdown stuff. And I had 
boxes of fabric from my fashion design um, hanging around the place. And I had listened to an interview um, or read an interview on the Irish Times about some nurse in the Midlands who was seeking um, masks uh, because they didn't have enough. And I was thinking to myself, God, look, I'm here at home. I've got a sewing machine. I've got all this fabric. I can totally do something here for these people. So I started sewing. And then that's where my other co-founder of East Coast Mask Makers came in, Sinead McGuinness. She loved the idea. She jumped on. She started recruiting all of these amazing sewers. A lot of them were family members. We established a Facebook group and then we suddenly started getting a lot more um, people from Facebook joining us so that now we're up to 40 seamstresses now actually. So yeah, we're, we're very busy. I, I don't have a chance to sew anymore. Myself and Sinead are adminning the whole thing and trying to get material out to people so that they can sew, trying to deliver the, the, the masks to everyone around the country. And yeah, we've delivered 5,000 so far. So it's, it's, been, it's been a journey. We were on RTE Ireland on call the other night and yesterday our emails were just hopping. And it was just yesterday now, I must say, was a very overwhelming day. I was a bit emotional and I was like, oh, Jesus, how am I going to, how are we going to get through all these emails? And, and there's only two of us and all these seamstresses, like, how are we going to do it? And I had to kind of take a step back and realize, look, there's only two of us. We're trying our best. We get masks out to people, but people are just going to have to maybe wait for a little while, you know. Um, but it's very rewarding. And... It's fabulous because we've got all these people at home who are on lockdown who now have a sense of purpose. They're all sewing away. Um, some people have told us it's a lifeline for them, um, that they didn't know what to be doing with themselves. And they're now, they now feel productive and they've got a sense of worth, a sense of purpose. And they're so happy just to be sewing and knowing that they're giving these masks to people in need. So it's sort of a win-win for those at home and it's a win-win for those who are receiving the masks. So it kind of merges nicely together, you know. It's, uh, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, enterprise. Congratulations. And I love the fact that you were sitting at home uh, just after things started and asking yourself, oh, what can I do? And then you decided to do something. I think that's key, Sinead, if I may. I think we as human beings, if we've got a talent, whatever that is, it could be coaching football, it could be making, you know, masks, it could be anything. If we can do something, I've always believed we should. Yeah. We can do something, I've always believed we should. And I did see the little snippet uh, to do with the RTE piece and, you know, congratulations. And there was one of your seamstresses, by the way, in the blurb before this, I put it out as sewing people because I wasn't quite sure if there's PC terminology around seamstresses or whatever. So yeah, I know, I know. Yes. Machinists, maybe. Machinists. There we go. There we go. There we go. Um, so anyway, I was, but I, I heard one of the ladies saying that uh, it's been a lifeline for her. It's given her, you know, purpose. So that's just, and you, you said it yourself here. It's yeah. wonderful stuff. That is win, win, win all the way around. Um, you did send me the uh, GoFundMe link, and I will look for that when uh, I'm going to pass you over to Princess Shelley in a little while. So I go look for that then. We put it into the, into yeah. the for people, if that's okay. Yeah. Congratulations. The, the, another Bula bus Thank for you. you and Sinead and all at East Coast Mask Makers. And actually, sorry, just going back to the, the part that the people at home are sewing, there's a couple of those ladies who are even isolating from their families right now within their own household and they're in a, in a room and they're getting their dinners passed to them, you know, nearly through the door and all, they have to wipe it down and all that, but they've got their sewing machine in their room. So like they're happy just to sew away and stuff. So yeah, it's great. Yeah. Congratulations. Uh, Life-saving work in every sense, in every sense, quite literally as it happens in these very strange times. Sinead, really interesting stuff. Uh, let's go to post COVID. Let's, Go to what you believe is going to happen uh, for perhaps East Coast Mask maker, Makers. Maybe, maybe there's a life beyond COVID, I don't know. But uh, Orion Productions, Sinead O'Reardon, where is it all headed? So I guess once things get back on the road and we have our new norm, um, I guess I'm still awaiting instructions as to how cast and crew can work together again, you know, safely. Um, but once those kind of rules are in place, we'll definitely be back on the saddle and we'll definitely be filming our feature film with Morris. Um, 
we we always tend to work with limited crew anyway because we just don't have the money and the resources. Um, Morris is kind of a one-man show in that he writes, he directs, and he edits. So we're lucky we have that. But, and he can actually do the, the, the cinematography as well. But um, yeah, as soon as this is all over, we'll definitely be back on the saddle with that. Um, I know that a lot of businesses will probably be online for the foreseeable future. I don't see this going away anytime soon, but maybe it will, If hopefully, if we get a, a vaccine fairly soon. Um, I see East Coast mask makers getting busier and busier, so I now need to, we've been taking it day by day, but now we need to sort of sit down and see if we need to bring more people in and help us manage, myself and Sinead, help us manage the distribution of the masks and all the admin stuff that goes with it. So. I think the mask making is here for a while, definitely. There's a, there's a huge demand for them. Um, I think, like, I was praying last week when Leo Varadkar was giving his uh, speech. I was praying in a way that he wouldn't say that mask making was compulsory, or mask wearing was compulsory, because I was like, I couldn't take that number of orders. I was like, panicking but I think it's coming you know and I think they haven't announced it yet because there's that whole fear with the supply and demand of the medical grade masks you know um, if they say that everyone needs to wear masks then that puts demand on the masks that the frontline staff are getting so but I think it's coming I think it's certainly coming I mean it's in most countries now um, so I'd say people will have to wear them going forward. So I think I'm going to be busy with that, definitely, myself and Sinead, but uh, we just have to sit down and figure out the logistics and how best we can manage that going forward, you know? We're, um, it's a fascinating place to be, Sinead. Uh, it really is like, a, you know, you've, you've, you, you were going 90 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour in one thing, and, you know, basically you hit the COVID wall like the rest of us. And uh, all of a sudden, you found yourself going 100 miles an hour in another thing, a COVID-born enterprise, which is really interesting. And and that looks like that's going to set to continue anyway. And um, as you say, when the you know the the, the the restrictions are announced or the limitations are announced, yourself and Morris will get back in the saddle and mm -hmm. go, and we wish it, of course, every success. In that loved a couple of things. I loved the fact that you say we work with a limited crew. You put that down to budget. I get that. I get that. However, a limited crew means trusted people. Totally. And I mean? that's my biggest belief in everything. Um, again, like going back to what I said, we've all worked, we've all worked with those people um, where you, you, you know it's the wrong dynamic. Um, and I've learned a lot during the years from that. So I trust my gut a lot more now and my intuition. And it's all about working with the right team and all of these people that we work with in our productions, they're all on the same wavelength. They're all keen to do work and do, and they trust us and we trust them. And, and that's at the end of the day, I think that's what it's down to. You're trusting people, you know. Uh, come here, you're absolutely right. It's about trust. Uh, there are three things we need to build a sustainable business I've learned over the years. One is a brand and you know, you're, you're a brand in Orion and you've got a brand in East Coast. Yeah. Um, the second thing are systems with which to run your business and the third thing crucial element is the people that, that you work with so uh, and you're better off taking your time to find great people and blessed on this little uh, initiative here also COVID born uh, to have Princess Shelley as my producer and Katrina O'Brien as the editor-in-chief and Eamon Smith is our head of guest services but his mother is very unwell we're talking perhaps last days and we wish him Oh, no. And our prayers have gone out to Ian Hannon has stepped into the breach this morning because, again, we're talking, uh, you know, a small crew of good people. We all have each other's back. Yeah. Ian, however, I was talking to him earlier this morning um, and uh, he sort of said, call me, he says, you can ask me any time for the next 100 years, you can ask me any time to help out and I will. And I said, Ian, what's going to happen after 100 years? Like, huh? Limitations. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, anyway, Sinead, um, if I may touch on East Coast, just throw some advice your way, if I may. It is a, a social project, dare I say, at this moment in time. If it's going to be busier, it needs to be commercialised somewhat. That does not necessarily mean it needs to be for profit. Yeah. You know, you may need to look at commercialising when people are basically buying the masks, etc., 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 so you can produce more. But from a philanthropic perspective, you can turn that into a not-for-profit and therefore 
channel the, 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 the proceeds into some worthy cause. Just putting that out there for what it's worth. Fantastic. Yeah, all advice is needed at this point, to be honest. Yeah. And, and I would also say I'd be happy to work with you um, pro bono just if, if that's, you know, as a sounding board, if that's of interest to you, because uh, it's really good work and you're, you're great people. Um, right, we better, we better move on. Uh, Sinead O'Reardon, it's an absolute pleasure having you on the Coffee at 11 show. I'm going to give you one more boo the bus. Thank you. Um, before, we're going to go to Q&A in a couple of minutes. Uh, with uh, f from the floor, uh, but before we go there, Sinead, uh, one last thing I'm going to ask you, and that is um, a tip. What one tip would you give your nearest and dearest? You will get through COVID best, come out the far end in best shape by doing blah. What's the blah for you? You know, I was thinking about that earlier, and I read a great article the other day about how we're all on this ocean together, and we're all. Uh, it, we're all in our different boats. Um, my tip would be to just try and navigate your boat as best you can. Not everybody's in the same situation. Some are cruising along, sipping their margaritas, enjoying the downtime, you know, taking on new projects. Um, I'm fortunate enough in that my situation and environment allows me to do that. Um, other people, they're hitting tidal waves and their boats are being knocked over and they're scrambling to safety. Um, so my tip really is just to not compare yourself to others and um, maybe you draw inspiration from certain people, but just keep going the way you're going. You know, um, we'll eventually all come out the end of it and um, just keep steering your boat as best you can and and you know, eventually you'll come to land, you know, so. That's, uh, that's a lovely analogy, really nice analogy. A uh, guy who was on the show the other day, uh, David O'Donovan, said to me, I'm not sure if he said it on the show, but he said it to me uh, around that time when we were preparing for the show. He said, um, we, we all find ourselves in lockdown with our decisions. Yeah. Their decisions, in other words, the decisions that have got, got us to this point are dictating, if you like, whether uh, we're in stormy waters in our boat or we're not. Uh, it just happens to be a very interesting way of looking at it, I think. But I, I think you, you lovely empathy in what you said there. Some people are able to kick back and it's all good. Some people are having a tough, much tougher than the rest of us. So uh, thank you for that, Sinead. Um, so I'm going to go to Q&A from the floor. Who's got a question for, for Sinead? Who's got a question? Can I, can I just give one, sorry, can I just give one big shout out to all the our amazing machinists at the moment? Because without them... We have nothing, you know, and they're the ones churning out the masks every single day. And they are a phenomenal bunch of ladies. We have a few men on board now as well, but primarily ladies. And I just wanted to give a big shout out and a big thanks to them. And I'm so grateful for them. So round of applause for all those amazing people. I love it. And we agree 100% round of applause for all those amazing people. Keep up the great work, folks, and more and more machinists need to come on board. Uh, happy days. Okay, who's got a question for Sinead? Oh, my, they're, all, they're all coming in, right? We go. Where do we go first? We go to Sarah Ward first, if that's okay. Sarah, you're live. Hi, Sinead. How are you? Yeah. That was a lovely story. Um, it really was. And, and, and you've had a very interesting life. Um, I'm actually mad to see that Sucking Diesel series. I'd love to see it. So if it's back on um, YouTube anytime soon, let us know or let us know where you, we can get it. Yeah. Um, where are you located, Sinead? I mean, in Scary in County Wicklow, but I'm born, from, I'm from Cork originally. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I think what you're doing is fabulous. The masks are really, really needed. Um, and I love your get up and go. You just don't let things kind of get you down no matter what. You just keep standing up and keep going no matter who you have differences with or whatever that word was uh you you kept going so well done and uh very best of luck to you it's fabulous what you're doing thank you that was uh, that was really nice sarah thank you for that i think you're expressing the views of all of us in the cafe today so uh yeah continued success Sinead. it's a pleasure having you on the on the show and by the way on the basis that you said you don't suffer fools gladly um i'm even more honored that you came on the show today right <laughs> yeah, so thank you for that um i'm going to go to princess shelley i know ian hannah wants to come in but i'm going to hand over to princess shelley and uh, she'll take it from there princess shelley hey 
everybody. Um, Sinead, I'm just, we're going to go to some comments here. Um, I just, as somebody who straddles multiple roles, I love how you just so elegantly straddle the software engineering and the acting and so you just, I just love it. I really do. And I love the value you place on um, surrounding yourself with good people as well. I think it's so important and I love that. And also just finally, before we went live this morning, you said that your husband was coming on and I asked his name so that I could look out for him. And all the way through, as you brought us up through your history, I didn't need to know his name, Don, because he was beaming while you brought us through the history and you could see him smiling and nodding and getting serious during the serious parts and it really is and that's the beauty of the cafe like this and this because I watched him and he just is you can see he's so so proud of you do you want to give everyone a wave there Dan um, so uh, so yeah it was just a real treasure it warmed me inside as the cafe does on a regular basis but today particularly it warned me to see his pride shine from his face for you um, so I just wanted that to be my comment. Um, thanks very much for that. Um, Ian popped in. He's our head of guest um, services today, Guest Comfort. He popped in all the URLs there, Sinead, for your Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn and all that. So yeah. people can access your platforms there. Yeah. And Ian also said, um, we embraced our limitations and reached for the stars, quoting what, what you referred to there. And if anyone needed some inspiration when things get tough, this is it. So um, I think he appreciated and related to that. And that's something people in the cafe now will love. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure people listen to the replay later will get something from that. Mm -hmm. um, Katrina, who is our editor in chief, she joins us kind of dark because she's busy working as well. And it, she popped in like she's listening away and she commented that um, fully agree with what you say, Sinead. Same storm, different boat. Everyone's situation is different. Compassion is needed to ourselves and to others. So, um, so yeah, that came in from Katrina. And finally, before we head, I can see a few people nodding to the same same boat. Um, so then we have Anne Christian Anderson, who is joining us today as well. Thank you for a wonderful story, Sinead, and sharing. You're such an inspiration. I just love the show and look forward to the next cafe. Have to leave for work now. Greetings from Sweden to all of you. And, and we love that when people join us like that and they can nip in and out just like a normal cafe. So she really, she's going to go about her day now thinking about your story and you're out there inspiring everybody. So um, Ian's just popped in your GoFundMe, East Cast Mass Makers link, um, which just brings me perfectly to unmute Ian for his question for you. Please, thanks for that, Shelley. So um, you probably answered this already, to be fair, Sinead. Uh, I was going to ask about the future of the mast business and, and your thoughts around that uh, and I suppose just in conversation between yourself and Colin you've, you've kind of answered that already so look really applaud you for that <clears throat> um, I, I, the only thing I'd, I'd add to that if you want to add anything uh, comment wise about your thoughts about it uh, by all means if uh, Colin mentioned I, I do that whole kind of sales training thing uh, more than happy to have a conversation with you at some stage and in return for a cup of coffee be that virtually over Zoom or otherwise at yeah. some stage I'm more than happy to help if I can um, and, and I'd love to see that uh, turn into something. But yeah, just if you, if you have any thoughts about where that's going, or, or is it kind of, you know, let's wait and see what happens to the situation for you. Mm, yeah, um, yeah, it is. I guess. I, I mean, I need to look at the scalability of things right now um, because I, we've just been inundated with so many requests at the moment. Um, like they're all going free to people who are vulnerable and in need and stuff. But then we have people who are coming in who just want to buy masks, you know, and because we're nonprofit, we can't really charge people. So we're kind of suggesting that maybe they donate a little to the GoFundMe to help with the, the supplies and stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, it would be interesting to, to sit down and to maybe like like my I, I don't have a huge business background um so I would love to hear people's thoughts and opinions on where it possibly could go you know for us great well look wish you the best of luck with us I'm sure you'll make a you'll make a big success with one way or the other so well done thank you thank you <laughs> Thanks for that question, Ian. That was great. Thank you. Um, perfect. There's some lovely comments there, Sinead, and I'm delighted to pass you back to Colm. Thanks very much, everybody. 
Uh, thank you, Princess Shelley. Thank you, Ian Hannan, for stepping into the breach this morning to help us with the show. Uh, um, uh, but also thank you for that offer to Sinead. And I love that. You know, there, there's a genuine warmth here. Um, uh, also, what Shelley said is really important. Uh, people can, like Anne Kristen, who's in Malmo, Sweden, pops in for a little while and pops back out. And I uh, just love that. It's a real cafe environment. So delighted with this. This is, this is very exciting. And let's see where it leads. It'll, you know, we'll make connections and see where it all goes in the future. Um, I'm going to bring the show to close in a second. However, um, I was, it was suggested to me, Sinead, that I would ask you about uh, Caroline and Tom Foolery in school. Caroline, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, <I'm hopefully. laughs> Caroline, oh Anne, I'm going to kill you. Caroline is um, one of my closest friends living in California. When I moved back from California, actually, Caroline moved out. And I always joke with her because I told her that she took my life, you know. Um, but basically, yeah, we were the biggest messers in school, the pair of us. Like, we used to get in trouble so often, um, just giggling. We'd, we'd have burst out with explosions of laughter. And you know what? We're the same to this date. Like, it's just, I mightn't see her for a year, but then I see her and we'd have that exact same dynamic. And we just laugh over the most ridiculous of things you know so she's she's an amazing girl and, and Anne I said is my second my, my mother there so yeah she knows all the dirt on us I love it and what gave you the impression that it was Anne that hung you out to dry <laughs> oh sure I, I, I only know the divilment in her face there says it all I'll tell, I'll tell you what we're going to do I'm going to bring Anne in I haven't asked your, your permission but I'm bringing you in because I want you to say hello to us uh, because it'll be on the video I want you to say hello to your daughter as well that would be great hello Sinead yeah this is a great opportunity I was actually lying in bed because I don't get up very often I don't get up very early <laughs> these days so I just spotted your post on Facebook and I said what a fabulous opportunity and um, I just want to heap loads of praise on Sinead because I know her from the time she was very, very young. I think you were probably about 12 yeah. when I got to know you first, 12, 13. Yeah, when you started secondary school together, Caroline and her. And we used to call them Martin Jeff. <laughs> Do you remember that, Sinead? Yeah. Yeah. I was small. And um, I just admired, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Caroline, my daughter, was tall. And Sinead at that point was smaller. So um, you were almost an unlikely pair to become friends, you know, but um, the friendship has lasted so long. And as I told Colm at the beginning, um, when you were still in California, Caroline decided to take um, six months off work, much to her parents' shock and horror. She had a full-time permanent pensionable job. <laughs> in HSC at the time. So she took off over to Sinead, wangled a visa. Sinead came back and she stayed. And yeah. they've maintained their friendship since probably 2004, I think, Caroline moved to California. Mm. So, you know, so it's, it stayed. And I love Sinead to bits. She's a great girl. And we've, we've always kept the friendship going, even though I'm here and Caroline is away. Yeah. So, yeah, she's great. Great girl. Uh, Anne Buckley, Anne Buckley, that was just beautiful. Thank you for that. This is for you and for Caroline and for Sinead Lee being your daughter astray. <laughs> yes. Back in the day. <laughs> Sinead, back to you just for two seconds. Uh, thank you, Anne. Um, and Caroline, we haven't met you yet, but uh, we wish you every success in what you're doing. I uh, pity that you stole Sinead's life, but hey, them's the breaks. <laughs> Now listen, um, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna let, let you all go in a second. Uh, before we do one last time, Sinead O'Regan, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on uh, Coffee at Eleven. Thank you for, for being here. Uh, let me tell you, folks, about what's happening tomorrow. Last show of the week tomorrow. A uh, guy I've known for several years now, many years actually, John Webb O'Rourke, and he sent me his bio. Um, and you know what? <laughs> I can't even go there this morning, right? Uh, the guy has got such talent and such uh, uh, business um, uh, foresight. Bottom line is he's involved in, um, in the medical industry, in the installation, the, 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 the building of uh, primary care facilities. And I'm really excited 
uh, to speak to John Webb O'Rourke tomorrow. And I'd love if you've got time, come back into the cafe and learn something else from not only my special guest, John Webb O'Rourke tomorrow, but from everybody who's in the, the, the cafe. Um, so thank you all for being here. Thank you, Princess Shelley. Thank you, Ian Ham, for stepping into the breach. Thank you, Katrina O'Brien, Editor-in-Chief, who make this all beautiful tonight before we share it back out. Around 10 o'clock tonight, we'll get that back out to you all. And uh, one last time, Sinead O'Riordan, namaste. <laughs> Thank you.